military communications, tech industry secrets, and maritime transmissions. These are some of the communications that experts say may be intercepted by a new intelligence gathering and military training facility in Cuba, built in partnership with China. Experts say China is trying to replicate the US's global surveillance capabilities, and Cuba could play a crucial role in that plan. The US has always had the advantage because we've had the geography, and that's why Cuba would be an important asset for China. So how does Cuba fit into China's global eavesdropping strategy? And what do China's other spy bases tell us about how this one could look? Both the US and China already operate a number of listening posts around the world as part of their Signals Intelligence, or SIGINT, programs. That's the process of eavesdropping on the voice conversations, text messages, emails, location signals, and data transmissions that fly around the world constantly. In June, US officials said China had reached an agreement worth several billion dollars with Cuba. The deal would allow the island nation to build a new military facility capable of electronic eavesdropping, a hundred miles from the Florida Keys. Beijing and Havana have both denied the planned facility, but US officials say China and Cuba already jointly run four eavesdropping stations on the island. And experts say this is just the latest chapter in a long history of Cuba's eavesdropping capabilities. Russia used Cuba for decades uh, because it was the one place that they could build a, uh, a listening post and collect a lot of the data from the United States. James Bamford has written five books on national security and intelligence agencies, and previously worked for PBS and ABC. He says that a Chinese listening post on Cuba would have a very clear mission. One of the key things you want to do is eavesdrop on, on satellites, because so much information is transmitted up to and then downlink from satellites. These satellites convey much of the world's military, diplomatic and commercial information. They orbit about 22,000 miles above the Earth at a fixed point over the equator, mostly above the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans. Bamford says China has only been able to tap into satellites over the Indian and Pacific Oceans, from facilities in the Spratly Islands and Great Cocoa Island. But listening into communications over the Atlantic Ocean is where Cuba comes in. I mean, the way the uh, Chinese would do it, basically you need a very large area and you're building satellite dishes. They're, they could be 90 feet across. And then you, a lot of times, will put it in uh, the ray dome, which looks like a big golf ball covering, both protecting it from the weather and hiding the uh, location of where you're targeting. These facilities can range from a single satellite dish to over a dozen. Having more dishes allows the station to target multiple satellites at once. Bamford says one US listening post in Japan can target 8,000 signals from 16 satellites. That's a huge amount of uh, data and you need uh, a large number of satellites to do that. And then once you've collected that, you've also got to demodulate it. You've got to, in other words, turn it from satellite data into data that can be understandable. This large amount of data is then filtered to focus on specific types of communications. Bamford says that unlike the US, which mainly targets military and diplomatic communications, China is primarily focused on commercial eavesdropping. They really are interested in, in technology and there are enormous amounts of technological communications going back and forth to Silicon Valley and so forth. But satellite dishes aren't the only type of sensor that China has established in its other spy stations around the world. This satellite imagery shows a type of direction-finding apparatus called an elephant cage, or Willenweber. They're huge antennas, they uh, could be a quarter mile uh, across, and they're, they've got 360 elements, uh, poles basically, wires on them, uh, in a circle. And the whole idea is when they're trying to listen for a signal, that signal will hit one of those elements, one of those wires, a millisecond before it hits another one. And that way they could tell what direction it is. This information is particularly useful for tracking maritime activity, with Cuba strategically located to pick up signals along the US East Coast. So if they're trying to listen for an American submarine in that area, and the submarine comes up and it sends a burst communication, it'll be able to collect that information and find out the direction. And then they'll triangulate it by having um, listening posts other places that have a similar type of antenna. And then you could triangulate it and find out exactly where that submarine is. As tensions between China and the US grow, intelligence gathering will continue to play a key role in the diplomatic, military, and commercial rivalry between the two nations. And while experts say Cuba's spy bases significantly improve China's eavesdropping capabilities, 
US officials say they are confident in their ability to meet their security commitments in the US and abroad.